This is all we see of Yoda during this entire section of the movie. He just feels something is wrong. He doesn't do anything that ever makes us appreciate the character from Empire Strikes Back. The guy who told us do not try is the least doing character in this entire trilogy. I want you to go to the Jedi Temple. We will catch them off balance. Somehow they'll not feel all this evil bullshit going on right now and won't detect you when you come to slaughter all the kids. Execute Order 66. Yes, my lord. Commander Cody doesn't stop for even one second to ask why the Emperor looks more like a potato than he does the Emperor. Also, if you remember, Cody, 66 is the order the Senate defines as wiping out the Jedi like little bitches. What planet is this? What Jedi is this? You don't care. I don't care. I don't even think Lucas cares, as long as it looks pretty. Tim Burton designed this alien planet, but asked to be uncredited after he saw a rough first cut. Oh no, not that Jedi. I grew to love her so much. Oh, f*** you. I can't believe these movies actually made me hate Yoda so much. There are CG animators out there who got tired of all the ways they had to draw Yoda feeling bad about something. Dumbass Jedi does not eject. Look, I know we're going for a killing the Jedi montage here, but you are the ones who set them up to be superhero gods. So when you go to slaughter them, maybe make some of them a fraction better than regular humans in these situations, eh? Jesus, this movie does more to tear down the lore of how powerful Jedi are than it does anything else. CGI is fun, Wee! They took forever to kill him, and now I'm supposed to have a boner because Yoda killed two guys. As long as you throw the Emperor down a shaft later, all these kids' deaths will be forgiven. Very f***ing tragic misuse of Natalie Portman. Wait, a second ago they were letting this asshole leave. Then some Jedi Tommy Tomasino jumps in and starts killing troopers, and then they're trying to kill this guy? The f***? If I had told you at the outset that two of the three prequel movies would contain scenes of Obi-Wan swimming underwater, would you have believed me? Because I don't think you would have. Goodbye, Chewbacca. Oh, so that really was Chewbacca. How did this guy get caught up with Han Solo then? Goes from a war hero on this planet to helping some asshole smuggle stuff across the galaxy. That's some coming home right there. Did you find Kenobi? Sir, no one could have survived that fall. In real life, almost everyone thinks there's at least a small chance someone could survive a fall like that. In the movies, all the bad guys are 100% sure no one can survive a fall like that. I heard there was an attack on the Jedi Temple. You can see the smoke from here. Um, yeah, that Jedi Temple getting attacked scene was intense. I heard a lot of harrowing dialogue about it. I feel so helpless. You mispronounce pointless. This lava moon's orbit is so close to its giant ass planet, I'm surprised it hasn't burned up in the atmosphere yet. Who the f said, yeah, definitely need to build an outpost on this moon? I know there's something wrong with the scene because none of these younglings' hands are detached. Anakin kills the 33 people necessary in order to attain orange eyes. So this is how Liberty dies with thunderous applause. <laughs> Sorry, something really stupid stuck in my throat there. Carry on. For the clones to discover the recalibration, a long time it will take. Roughly as long as it took you to say that sentence, so yes. It can't be. Another failure here. So much of the reason why Obi-Wan can't believe Anakin did this is because of all the adventures they've had off screen together that they've merely alluded to a couple of times. Meanwhile, all we've seen of Anakin is a whiny, quick to anger little bastard. The emotion of this scene is lost. And that will my new apprentice. Good of the Emperor to say this in perfect view of the security recordings. Use your feelings, Obi-Wan, and find him you will. Since when do a Jedi's feelings work in these movies? Why doesn't Obi-Wan just play the incriminating security video of Anakin killing children for her? Anakin is the father, isn't he? Ask that again. I was distracted by all the bullshit in the background. Anakin is the father, isn't he? You seriously didn't know that already? God damn, can Jedi sense shit or fucking not? Obi-Wan leaves Padme, walks toward his ship, and the next time we see them, they're about to fly to the lava planet. At no point do we see Padme making a tough decision to say, F*** it, Anakin is evil. Let's kill him. I don't care if I'm carrying twins. That guy is dead. Also, I guess Obi-Wan didn't search his feelings about Anakin's whereabouts. He just happened to know someone who knew the information he needed. Obi-Wan brings Padme to the lava planet for his kill of Anakin, because what could possibly go wrong? Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Why do we hate this line so much? Is it because the badass character Padme we saw in Phantom Menace going around leading an assault on the Viceroy has become a lump of melodramatic mush? Let. Ha. Uh, go. Duh. Okay. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Discount what Jesus said. This is what it's all been leading towards. Obi-Wan fighting Anakin. And it's really kind of the letdowniest of all letdowns. Man, if only we could have had some of this Yoda two movies ago. Hell, under this trilogy's structure, it practically demanded Yoda be terrible at Yodaing until way later. Yoda takes this lightning blast as if he wasn't expecting the Emperor to be evil or something. At last, the Jedi are no more. Not if anything to say about it. I have. Good job, movie. You made me want Frank Oz to shut up somehow. Anakin's robotic arm somehow isn't strong enough to just crush Obi-Wan's throat. Not much but dual lightsaber duels going on right now. But I wonder, the Emperor had a tough time with Mace Windu during their duel, so how does he keep up with Yoda, who is flipping all around as super fast and is mostly considered to be the best Jedi up until recently? Seriously, how does he not see this until the last second? 
How did he not see Yoda stop it midair and start spinning it and then throwing it towards him? Yoda can catch the Sith lightning in his hands, proving his badassery. But eventually he falls, and another fall takes him out of the action. You assume temporarily. But the movie cuts back to the Anakin Obi-Wan fight and basically makes you forget that Yoda has options to get back in the fight. For example, elevators, stairs, the Force. Instead, the next time we see Yoda, he's crawling through a wiring duct as if he's totally defeated. Why would the battle ever come to this? I'd rather take my chances even if I was cornered than to jump down on a f***ing pipe hovering above lava to fight. It's completely unbelievable a lightsaber duel could go on this long without any lost limbs or ears or heads. Apparently not being nearly epic enough, the Obi-Wan-Anakin fight now has to feature them falling on a large metal thing that we have no idea what its purpose is other than to make lightsaber fights more dramatic. Because Lucas only has so many ideas, here's a hero after a near defeat falling from the bottom of a hovering space building into an awaiting rescue ship driven by the handsome minority side character, in case you haven't seen Empire Strikes Back. Into exile, I must go. Failed, I have. I know we need a reason why Yoda goes to Dagobah, but he very much gave up the fight with the Emperor too soon. All the cool stuff Yoda did in the past 10 minutes, forget about it. How fortunate is it that this tower stays upright while floating down a river of lava it's being consumed- Oh, f*** it. My lack of interest should be beyond obvious by now. Just tell me when it's over. This is supposed to be epic, but it feels like a guy who just learned After Effects creating his own fanfiction and sharing it on YouTube, which was founded the very year this movie came out. Coincidence? Wait, aren't they powering their pieces of metal junk to fly over this lava pit? Seems like this is a talent that could have gotten a lot more use over time. Basically, this means you can fly, as long as you have a thing underneath you. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! Yep, movie about superhero Jedi freaks that can leap small buildings will now somehow be decided by a couple of feet above sea level, because Sun Tzu! I have the high ground! So did Darth Maul, and you saw how that turned out. Also, even if high ground mattered, why would Anakin need to give up in this instance? Can he simply drive back to where all this started, or find another spot to dismount? It was said that you would destroy this Sith, not join them! You're still on about that. Stupidly, Obi-Wan takes pity on his former student and walks away before confirming his death. Terminator Genesis. Medically, she's completely healthy. Are there really no human doctors left in this world? Everyone here gets treated by a big hero six dressed in Johnny Five clothing. For reasons we can't explain, we are losing her. It's called the She Wasn't in the Original Trilogy disease. Luke. <laughs> Padme names her kids as they exit her womb, which is simply unnatural. It's like Lucas said, no one will know who these kids are. Better have Padme name them as soon as they pop out. Ah, I see Padme went to the Close Your Eyes and Tilt Your Head school of movie deaths. It seems in your anger, you killed her. Darth Vader believes this. Also, wow, lying liars and the lies they tell. Isn't he already Darth Vader? Does he really still need manipulating? No! Yes? I mean, no. We must take them somewhere where the Sith will not sense their presence. We'll take Luke to somewhere like, I don't know, Anakin's old home planet. Why the hell not? And what of the boy? To Tatooine. Do his family send him? It's almost like they forgot the guideline they set just 20 seconds earlier. I will take the child and watch over him. Kinda. Also, he and I will keep our same last names because f that pseudonym bullshit. Qui-Gon? How to commune with him, I will teach you. I'll also teach you about forgetting him, too. Have the protocol droids mind wiped? but not the R2 unit. He'll go on with all his memories, but forget he knew any of these people. Yeah, this saga would have felt incomplete without the Padme funeral. Good call. Jar Jar is extra sad about his own part in the fall of the prequels. I mean, Empire. Man, they buried her with extra hair, right? Did she have that shit wigged out in a closet somewhere already? That is a f ton of hair, is all I'm saying. Discount long distance not actually Peter Cushing. Movie thinks construction footage of a doomed thing will make for an exciting ending. And movie is wrong for the 147th time. Isn't Vader still badly burned? Did they ever give him anything for that? That's gonna get infected. Touching Alderaan baby delivering scene is undercut by the future knowledge that all these are people on this planet gonna die. Here, have a baby. Also, Jedi storks. Also, Owen and Baru age like 40 years while Luke ages 20 the next time we see them. Movie prequel trilogy thinks it's tied off all the loose ends despite ending roughly 20 years from the start of the original trilogy. What about Luke's puberty? What about Leia's struggle with why her parents' castle has a ballroom but never has any balls? Also, are we supposed to believe that Luke got his double sun gazing habit from his aunt and uncle while he was two weeks old? Such poetry. Oh, this is going to be easy. Flying is for droids. Oh, dear. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Always on the move, Sith Lords are our speciality. Did I miss something? How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Do you have a plan B? And try not to upset him. Not to worry. We are still flying half a ship. Another happy landing. Hello there. So uncivilized. I have the high ground!
Is he not to destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force? What's in your wallet? But on my way, I'm gonna be doing this. If you get hit, it's your own fault. March to hell, please. Leave none alive. Anakin, all I want is your love. All you need is love. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. There's a man out there. What do they call him during the war? You know, the, the pilots? Gremlins. It's running a little hot. Hold me. Like you did by the lake on Naboo. Let's do what we did in Mexico City. This is Papa Dragon. I want this mission high and tight. I want to be home for dinner. But the war is over. The war is over, sir. The war is over. They taste like I will deal with this Jedi slime myself, you fool! Deliver the device to me, or I will destroy your ship!